All right. Uh, so this week um, we will talk about um, the visual analytics in Tableau. So that is actually the reason that why Tableau has become uh, so popular because it has very great um, powerful and also excellent um, visual analytic functions. Uh, so through this lecture, um, I hope you can do the demos that we are doing. We, we can do the demo together so that can give you a better understanding of those functions. Um, so what is visual analytics? So Tableau defines the visual analytics as the process of gaining knowledge and also insight from data um, by using those interactive and uh, visual interfaces. Uh, so some of those functions that uh, those, the most common tools and also functions uh, for visual analytics. So some we have saw that earlier, like uh, drill down, sort. I think we also saw an example of the group and also parameter. We also used a uh, filter uh, tool tip um, and also we have tried like uh, the reference lines, trend lines, etc. Uh, so this week we'll go to deep into those functions and also see that how those functions can help us um, better understand the data. So first, the concept between measure and also dimensions. Uh, so measures are quantitative data like numbers. Um, dimensions are categorical data like strings, okay, and also date is also one type of dimension data. Okay, um, measures are aggregated to the granularity of the view. Okay, so that's a very important concept in Tableau. So in, when tab, in Tableau, when we bring the numbers into the view, so they are always aggregated to the granularity of the view. So depending on how many marks that you set uh, in the view so that we all decide number of the uh, markers and also aggregation levels. The granularity is set by the dimensions and also by the markers. OK, and if we want to make some markers at a set a certain granularity, but without using markers like colors or shapes, and we can bring the field into the level of the detail shelf. OK, uh, we'll see the example later. And also, in addition to measures and also dimensions, we also have the concept that are continuous data and also descript data. So those are mathematic concepts. Uh, normally, measures are considered discrete, dimensions are considered continuous. OK, but it is not always the case. So continuous means that uh, the, the values forming an unbroken whole without interruption. Well, discrete means that individually separate and also distinct. OK, so keep in mind that dimensions of the measures, uh, they can be continuous and they can also be discrete, especially for the measures. OK, uh, so let's see one example. So here we are looking at IDs. So IDs are numbers. So those are considered dimensions, OK, because each ID uh, uh, it does not make sense if you use one ID plus another. So however, if you put that in as continuous, remember in Tableau, continuous are labeled as with green colors. And you can see that um, put that IDs at worst price. And you can see that we have this uh, line chart. OK, because here, if you treat the uh, this uh, dimension as continuous, if you treat as a discrete, which will be used a blue color. And you can see here we have bar chart that shows, you know, the number of those values, uh, the, the price of each single diamond. OK, so let's see an example. So let's go to our lab and let's open the lab one workbook, which uh, we uh, we created from our uh, in the first week. OK, which has those diamond data and let's create a new sheet. And here, let's say we bring price, okay, and into the view, 
So here we can see the price is a matter. And when we bring that into the view, and we can see that it's considered continuous because that is a green color. And then by default, this has been aggregated, okay, to the level of the dimension. So here we didn't bring any dimension here. So that's why we have just the, the total of the price. And if we bring different um, dimensions into the view, for example, if we bring clarity into the columns, so it will bring the number of the markers into the number of the clarities. So here we can see we have five markers, that is because we have five types of the clarities. And the similarly, if we bring that one to colors, okay, so that also uh, break the data down into five categories, so five clarities. Okay, um, and if we bring that color, so now you can see we have 30 markers, okay, because uh, we have uh, went six types of the colors and also five types of clarities. So all those combination together, uh, now we have those 30 markers. Okay, so that is that matters are determined by the dimensions and also the markers. And if you want to look at data at the uh, at the finer uh, granularity level, but without changing like the shapes or the colors, and you can bring that into the detail level of the detail. So for example, here I'm looking at you see data per color. And if I want to see the at the ID detail, I can bring ID into the detail level. Okay, so now we see each single record at the ID level. Okay, so that is a, at the finest granularity level. Okay, and now let's see that uh, ID versus um, price. Okay, so here you can see ID is not considered dimensions, uh, but and it is also not considered discrete data. So when we see discrete data, we can see they are now break into different bars. Okay, so that's what we call discrete. So if I change that one into continuous, so now we have the line chart. Okay, so now uh, Tableau will treat the ID as uh, continuous, which is not appropriate in this case, but just give you the idea that, okay, so what's the difference between dimension and matter and also difference between continuous data and also discrete data. And we also know that Tableau has this drill down function so that if we create a hierarchy and we can um, expand in the hierarchy so that drill down into the next level of the detail. And that is sometimes very useful, especially when there is a is a hierarchy in your data structure, like the state, um, county, etc. Uh, we can also manipulate each level in, uh, independently. So here, I just want to point out that date fields are automatically considered um, hierarchy data and also considered dimensions. Okay. But the data can be also treated as continuous data or treated as discrete data. Okay, so here this example. So if we treat as discrete data, so like days, and you can see that each single day of the month will be one uh, category. Okay, and we can see the price per day of the month. So the day of the month, it can be the month of February, it can be a month of January. Okay, and uh, if we treat that as continuous data, so that you can see still at the day level, but now each day is different, so that we have the day from February 1st, uh, January 1st, February 1st, um, March the 1st, okay, and also different years, okay, and also another January 1st, which is also different years. Okay, so that date can be con treated as continuous and also di discrete depending on the purpose of your analysis. So let's go to see another example. Let's see our uh, lab four, which we used the data warehouse data. So let's open that one. Okay. And this uh, workbook will connect to the data warehouse 
so the data is not uh, stored locally, so you need types uh, password again. Okay, so that be able to um, view the data. Um, I might tap the, the wrong password. Okay. All right. Uh, so now let's create a new sheet. Um, so here let's drag the sales for the sales table. Let's drag sales time and also total price being paid. Okay, so right now you can see this. Now the date is considered uh, discrete because you can see it is in a blue color. Now if we expand, okay, so different colors. Okay, so we can expand so to the next level. So months. Okay, and also day. You can see that January, February, etc. Okay, and and also as I said, we can treat um, the each um, um, level independently. So if you drag out the year, quarter, months. So now we have the day. Okay, so now the day is considered discrete data and not categor categorical data. So you can see the day of the month, the first day of the, that month, second day of the month, third day of the month. And now if we bring the data into the color here, let's say we look at the different months. So now hopefully this will give a better idea. So like each day of the month, and now you can see the colors are different uh, months. Okay. So that is the day of any month. Okay, the first day of any month, the second day of any month, third day of any month. If we treat that one as a continuous data. Okay, so now I just switch that one to continuous. So we still have the year, and now if we expand, uh, we all go to the quarter, etc. Okay, so you can see by by look by treating that as continuous. Uh, we don't have the expanded um, peels, but we just have single peel. So that is a, the months. And if you look at to the days, you can see that it is different unique day. Okay. So this is the January um, 31st. Okay. February 6th, etc. And also here we have another data. Okay. Until December. So different months, so that at the day level. So that difference that when we treat date data, we can treat that as continuous. We can also treat the date data um, as discrete data. Uh, next, let's talk about sort. So sort is also um, a very powerful and also common way that to analyze data. And there are several ways, several ways that we can sort the data. So we can use quick sort on axis. We can sort from the field labels, from the toolbar, and also we can just manually sort the data by drag and drop. We can also sort from the peel. Okay, and a very important concept is that the, the nested sort. Okay, so here you can see that here we are using, using the field sort, so we have colors and also clarities. So if I'm using the field sort, you can see that all those markers are sorted based on the value in that field regarding uh, uh, the color. So that means that in each category, the sort for the clarity are always the same. OK, so that is called a field sort. And if we are using nested sort, which by default, the quick sort is a nested sort. That means within each color category, the clarity are sorted based within that category. So we can see for color D, the, um, the highest average price is VVS1. And for color H, the highest average price is VS2. So that is called nested sort. So let's go back to our uh, lab one uh, workbook. And now let's say we, we bring the price and also the color. OK, uh, clarity and also color. OK, so there are several ways to sort. You can see uh, 
that should be color and also clarity. So you can sort with the axis. So by default, that is a nested nice sort. You can see within each color. OK, uh, the clarities are have different uh, orders. So let's switch that one to average price. OK, so that is a, a nested nice sort. And you can sort based on the field where you can see right now we are using a nested nice sort. And we can also sort by the field. OK, so in this case, we are sort by the average price per clarity. And we can see VS2 always has the highest average price, no matter in which color. So if you drag that in front color, you can see the order is the same. OK, um, you can also sort in at the peel. So here you can see sort by the colors. And here you can choose descending, ascending, etc. OK, uh, you can also manually sort. So for example, if I put D or E above D, so I can manually sort uh, the values. So by using the drag and also drop. And also, uh, we can also sort based on the field. So if, for example, if I click the weight, and if I want to sort by the weight, uh, even the weight is not within this um, data set, and we can still sort that based on the weight. OK. So that is sort by using this um, sort bar. Uh, finally, so for example, if you get um, pretty uh, confused about about sort, uh, so sometimes you just want to clear the sort. Uh, we can always go to um, here, and also you can see we can clear the sort. Okay, so that we will be using the default default sort.